In Unit 1B.6, we will discuss conformity, obedience, and pro-social behavior, as well as their respective impacts on individuals and social interactions within groups. You will need to focus on the people or theorists and their theories. You must be able to explain the theories and their real-world implications for this course. This is a very important unit as there are usually multiple questions on the AP exam. We begin with conformity. Conformity is adjusting our behavior or thinking towards some group standard whether the standard is real or imagined. Living in an individualistic culture like the United States, many believe that they have the power and self-control to stand up to the group for whatever reason. However, they, like you, I am sure, will be surprised at how much our behavior and attitudes are controlled by conformity. While it seems conformity declines with age, there have been groundbreaking studies that show conformity can affect anyone. We will start our investigation of these studies with Solomon Ash's 1951 line experiment. To study conformity, Solomon Ash devised a simple test. As a participant in the study, you arrive at the experiment location in time to take a seat at a table where five are already seated. The, experiment asks, the experimenter asks which of the three comparison lines is identical to a standard line. You see clearly that the answer is line C. <clears throat> and wait your turn to say so after the others. Your boredom with this experiment begins to show when the next set of lines proves equally easy. Now comes the third trial, and the correct answer seems just as clear cut. But the first person gives what strikes you as the wrong answer. Answer B, line B. When the second person and then the third and fourth give the same wrong answer, you sit up straight and squint. When the fifth person agrees with the first four, you feel your heart begin to pound. The experimenter then looks to you for your answer, torn between the unanimity of your five fellow respondents and the evidence of your own eyes. You feel tense and much less sure of yourself than you were moments ago. You hesitate before answering, wonder whether you should suffer the discomfort of being the oddball. What answer do you give? Well, for the vast majority of research uh, subjects, they conformed with the group instead of relying on their own uh, senses, our own knowledge. This shows that for the majority of people, conforming and fitting in with the group is more important than risking public embarrassment by standing out from the crowd. Again, very significant experiment. Make sure you memorize this one. Richard Crutchfield is another lesser-known psychologist who developed the idea of normative and informational social influences. These are both ways in which society or others influence our thoughts and behaviors. Normative social influences emphasize humans' natural sensitivity to social norms because the price for nonconformity can sometimes lead to social isolation. This is the innate desire to gain approval or avoid disapproval. To put it in the context of an average school day, a new student in Coppell, Ashley, wants to, find a, wants to find a new group of friends. She notices that all the seniors at Coppell High School are wearing overalls. Ashley decides to purchase overalls in an attempt to fit in with her new culture slash society, her, her school. Or a new student, Jim, sees all the boys at school wearing cowboy gear, so he decides to buy a Dallas Cowboy jersey, despite being a Philadelphia Eagles fan, in an effort to avoid disapproval from his new friends. Now there are exceptions to every rule, and some individuals n might not feel compelled to conform to social norms. In this case, their behavior might be influenced by informational social influences. These results uh, from one's willingness to accept uh, others' opinions about reality and these individuals will seek out information or data to determine if their beliefs are in fact accurate. For example, let's say Jim, after observing his new peers wearing Dallas Cowboy gear, decided to research the Cowboys to discover how good they really were. After discovering how terrible the Cowboys are as a football team, Jim decides not to buy the Cowboys jersey. He may not make friends this way, or he might gain the respect of his peers for sticking with his roots as a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Other reasons for conformity are cultural norms, as we discussed earlier, ambiguous situations such as deindividuation from a previous subunit, and unanimous majority judgment, such as groupthink. Another reason to conform to the group or to authority is obedience. This may be due to obligation through government mandates, social norms, parents, rules, or a variety of other reasons. Obedience involves initializing or changing behavior as a result of a direct command. 
even when the commands violate their personal beliefs. The last part of the definition should be emphasized. A groundbreaking experiment was conducted on obedience by a famous psychologist from Yale named Stanley Milgram, who's pictured here. In one of the most historically significant experiments ever conducted on humans' natural inclination to obey authority, Milgram developed the shock box experiment. In this experiment, Milgram solicited the average person, whether they be bankers, teachers, gas station workers, whoever, to take part in a memory study. The study would only take an hour of the participants' time, and they would be paid for their time. As you can see in this, uh, in the, in this advertisement. Now the experiment calls for two participants to take part at a time. Milgram's assistant explains to the participants that the study concerns the effect of punishment on learning and memorizing. One participant will be assigned as the student, while the other is assigned the part of teacher. The student is then led to an adjoining room and strapped into a chair that is wired through the wall to an electric shock machine. The teacher, having witnessed the student being strapped in, then takes his place in the next room. So he's separated by a room, so they can't see each other. Uh, to teach and then test the learner on a list of paired words. The teacher is to punish the student for wrong answers by delivering brief electric shocks to the student, beginning with the lowest voltage. After each of the student's errors, the teacher increases the voltage to the next highest. As the student provides more and more incorrect answers, the voltage increases and the student uh, begins to yell and scream in pain. The student's screams can be heard by the teacher. The teacher, hearing the cracking of the shock box and the screaming of the student, often would protest to the experimenter that the student was in pain and therefore they would not continue the shocks. The experimenter would persist that the, exp that the experiment continue by reassuring the teacher that the experimenter was in charge and responsible, so the teacher must continue for the sake of the experiment. So with all that in mind, what percentage of the participants in this experiment do you think went all the way to the fatal 450 volts? Do you think you'd be able to resist the authority of the experimenters to stop torturing the student? Most psychologists believed that it would be a very small percentage that would, that would commit the fatal shock, that would, that would keep shocking, keep shocking all the way till fatality, till death. And so most uh, psychologists predicted that it would be maybe 10% that would go all the way because that was abnormal uh, psychotic behavior, according to them back in the 1940s. However, 66% of the participants were willing to go all the way to 450 volts. Milgram's inspiration for this experiment was the Holocaust per, uh, perpetrated by the Nazis. Milgram, an American Jew, hypothesized that this blind obedience of all German people against the Jews due to the authority of the Nazis was a unique phenomenon to the German people, but as he found out, it is a natural human instinct found in most of us. Because so many teacher participants were traumatized to find that they were capable of obeying authority so blindly to the point that they were willing to shock someone to the death, many of them developed severe depression as they began to question their own ability to judge from right or wrong. For this reason, the experiment is banned from replication due to psychological trauma to its subjects. However, if this experiment was conducted today, would it produce the same results? Could it happen today? The answer is yes. According to a 2009 study, 70% of the uh, participants would go all the way to the fatal shock. So it actually looks like the percentage is increasing. Our conformity and obedience is increasing. Some factors that influence obedience is the prestige of authority. Um, like how we obey a police officer when we are asked to stop. Um, or we ob obey our parents, our teachers, because we feel p uh, that they, they could punish us if we don't do otherwise. Also, the presence of others who do disobey can uh, influence uh, our, us to conform or, or, or obey to authority. So if someone disobeys authority and is punished severely, then that could scare others to, to obey. Personality characteristics such as external locus of control, meaning that someone has uh, very low sense of self-control, that their location of control is outside themselves. That's what external locus control is. Um, disillusion of responsibility, as we talked about with uh, deindividuation, where a person puts the uh, 
responsibility of their actions onto the group. So therefore, they obey and, and don't feel negatively or, or any remorse for bad actions they might commit. Another groundbreaking experiment on obedience and conformity was conducted by my personal favorite, Philip Zimbardo, at Stanford University in 1973. This study was the Stanford Prison Experiment, which enabled Zimbardo to develop the concept of the Lucifer Effect. The Lucifer Effect describes the point in time when an ordinary, normal, average person first crosses the boundary between good and evil to engage in an evil action. It represents a transformation of human character that is significant in its consequences. Such transformations are more likely to occur in novel settings, in total situations, where social situational forces are too sufficiently powerful to overwhelm or set aside temporarily personal attributes of morality, compassion, or sense of justice and fair play. This is often due to a lack of oversight or authority. The horrible abuses of Abu Ghraib is a great example of the Lucifer effect. Watch the next video on the Stanford Prison Experiment to understand the full scope of the significance of Zimbardo and the Lucifer Effect. According, according to Zimbardo, evil is the exercise of power to intentionally harm, psychologically hurt, physically, or destroy, mortally or spiritually.